I'm a fat pig. What did you just call me? I'm starving. I am so full. I'm gonna vomit. I can't fit. I'm nauseous. What are you gonna order? Can I get a side of mayo? I'm sweating. Do you hear my breathing? I cannot stop eating chips. This is not an extra large. Do I look fat? Welcome to Fat Pig. I'm Frank Liotti. And I'm Jessica Karsten. It is a heat wave. Yes, I didn't know what the car was. And by the time... I thought we were in a car for a second. We are. It's so hot that I don't even know if I'm in the car or not. The heat really does weird things to the body. Like, everyone's body reacts differently to things. Most people, seriously, like, in in the city in the summer, most people look like they've taken, like, a steam bath, but the steam is made out of filth. Yeah. Like, the subways open up all of your pores and let in, like, dirt and rat poop and the genes of ghosts of homeless people it's disgusting i don't go on the subway anymore and i don't live in the city so i don't have to well i lived in the city for eight years but i don't live in new york city but I, even if i did since 9 11 mm-hmm. unfortunately i cannot go on a subway barbara streisand has never gone on the subway since she got famous oh i used to all the time but i'm i'm petrif like i'll have a panic attack I'm on the petrif- subway yeah yeah. But you're missing all the great shows. <laughs> well, I, people might not know what that means, meaning like there's so many performances. In other words, like the latest thing for the last couple of years is you'll be on your way to work and your skull like isn't even disconnected from your brain yet because it's so early. And like three or four kids will get on and they'll go, yo, yo, it's showtime. It's showtime. And then they'll, <laughs> they'll blast some music and they'll like do dance moves and flip themselves off of the poles and stuff. And then they'll be like, "Come on, nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt." Yeah, <laughs> so I've seen like, that on. I've seen that on the, um, you know, on the internet. People doing shows like that, but I can't do it. Right. Like I just can't get on a subway. I, first of all, I'm completely claustrophobic. I hate being around groups of people like that. It's, I freak it's, out. It makes me want to move. That's the main reason that makes. Yeah, me want to move. and then I'm also petrified that someone's going to come do something. Like it's Chris, horrible. Like Kristen Chenoweth singing "Popular" from Wicked on the E train. No, I'm not petrified of that. I'm petrified of I am. something major happening. <laughs> so well, let's talk about a major happening for a second, because we went to a city this weekend, the fat pig bride and groom <laughs> that I've never been to. We went to Pittsburgh. Yes. Can I just say how I'm fascinated with the accent of Pittsburgh? Yeah. Wait. <laughs> wait, no. I can't do okay, it. Wait a minute, I have to think about it now. The famous one is O. Oh, wait, Gino, Spanish. We're not going over all, oh, on. That's it. Dr- on. Drive on the road. Drive on the road. On. Nah. Oh. Nah. Don't walk. Drive on the on the road. What's the name of Oprah's channel? Oh, own. it's own. own. I own that shirt. She owns you and Gail. Own. You and- own. A great car. Oprah owns all the road, roads in Chicago. Is that how they say gown to? Gown. 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 Nah. What color gown on. do I have to wear? Put your pants on. On. We're late for Geno's. Put your pants on. Fuck me her. <laughs> Fuck me on my nose. Ew, on my knee. Do you want me on my knees? You want some pierogies? It's grandma's recipe. Kielbasa? I think pierogies are Polish, aren't they? Because I'm Polish. Bone. It's like it's like Johnny. Like it's it's a very like over there. Did thing. you just completely? <laughs> I asked you a question. It's a very like. <laughs> well, because I don't want to say his name. I don't want to like talk about people that you know without their consent. Wait, no. Are you talking about pierogies? Yes. Oh, like Johnny's family is all from Pittsburgh and the surrounding area, right? And he's his background is Russian, right? But it's all like pierogies, kielbasa. That's like the food of that area. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, he's Russian. I don't I know if it's. A, I think it's Polish too. It's. I'm so sure it is. P- Vyselka is Polish. The What's restaurant that? Vyselka, the restaurant oh. here, is Polish, and they're known for their pierogies and kielbasa and all that food. Right. Food, you know, it's I need on, a new vibrator. It's on point. I do. I need a new vibrator. I need a new subscription to Velvet and Nugget and Penthouse. You know. I, I'm I'm going to go to a store, but I don't know what to get. I need one that's very powerful. I would order it. Oh, then you need to go to like a I, Home Depot or Rickles or Pergamon. I do. <laughs> very Rickles. powerful. Rickles. What's Rickles? You don't remember Rickles? 
No, Don. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to Don Rickles about finding a nice vibrator. Look at your vibrator. Yeah, we need to get in touch with Rickles. <laughs> he knows all about him. Is he dead? Wait a minute. You prefer a vibrator instead of a non-electric dildo? Well, I, I'll have a vibrator, seven dildos, nipple clamps, you need a, lot a whip. Them. You need a lot. Of, a mule. You need I don't, yeah. like a lot. Like no, a I need one vibrator, but it has to be like a jackhammer. Right. I'm, I'm like dead Do down the there. the sound. <laughs> no, I have, um, I need a lot of pressure. I'm being right, honest. Right. I think it's because I hate myself. I get it. I can't be gentle like, oh yeah, this feels good. Like one, f- I don't know how people do that. I need to like. Get, you need to plow yourself. Yeah, I need like a rake. Mm-hmm. I should just get a rake a and attach, like make it. I must know a lesbian that can make a rake into a vibrator. Like in, I thought you were going to say in two minutes. I'll whittle it. I'll make it into a fucking, fucking vibrator. I'll it fucking right now. Give me your fucking butter knife, you I nail. did it with a fucking uh, shovel once for Vanessa. Let me try it out on you. On, you, on. Let me do it on you. Let me do it on you, okay? Oh, no. That ain't no dildo. Ew. Dildo sounds like a doorbell. Like, dildo. <laughs> That's such a fucking crazy word. Well, we they're not going to know we're here unless you press the dildo. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so bored in Home Depot. Let's go try out the dildo. In the light department. <laughs> dildo. All my clients here. Dildo. Dildo. Doe. A deer. A female deer. I'm Ray, so excited. A drop of golden sun. Jessica got us tickets to Me, see. Me. A name I call Dildo myself. Dildo the musical. Huh? A long, long way to Plow it up my ass. Plow it up my ass. Shove it in. No. A needle. Th- I'm just making up work. So. A needle pulling threads. Slap yes. me in the face with it. What? Plow. Plow my ass real hard. Nothing will shoot out of its head. Shoot what? I was doing Dildo the Musical. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Is that for kids? Kids? Mommy, I want to see Dildo the Musical. Oh, I don't know, kids. Dildo the Musical is for adults. No, it's for me, Mommy. No. I love that you have a man's voice. Mommy, mm-hmm. do you have a cold? No, I feel fine. Maybe you are ready for it from the way you've been sucking on that charms blow pop. I think Dildo the Musical might be just for you. Yay! <laughs> Who's the best mommy in the world? You are mommy. Aww. me oh you know i won't stop until you come what you know i won't stop until you shoot ropes of cum all over the fucking walls why is every episode have to include ropes of cum ropes of why? cum is going to be my alex is even album. laughing look he knows cuz it's it's Im- i hate uh, it's like me saying smell of vagina <laughs> to you <laughs> no it's not yes it is i the word ropes cum smells uh, like no. duncan hines ropes I, is like cum does not smell like duncan hines i've had a lot of it and it batter. doesn't it's disgusting Cake batter, it, it smells is. like. Come? No, it doesn't. Who are you sleeping with? Fruity, like, fucking... The Pillsbury Dough fucker. No. Do you think if the Pillsbury Doughboy, if you blew him, do you think it would taste like vanilla? Yes. Frosting? Yes, that's why I was trying to think of, like, if, are you are if, you sucking on Barney? If cum tasted like... Kids, I have great cum for you. Here you go. Ah, <laughs> ah, 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 I just got this image <laughs> of, like, a purple, like, a hose shooting, like, grape-flavored ice water. <laughs> Because he's Barney, large. Barney. How do you think? Do you think grimaces from Grimace from McDonald's? Do you think his sex <laughs> organs are under the flat of the bottom? You know how he's a Pro- circle. Yes. <laughs> like he, like like a, a slug. Like like he would have to sit down on something. <laughs> you hear the noise it made? Yeah. Do it again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I wonder if when Grimace comes, his whole like purple body just kind of like ripples and the eyes bulge. Let's who do you think has the biggest cock on Sesame Street? I thought you were gonna say on McDonald's. No. That hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Big Bird. On McDon oh, wait, on, on Sesame Street? No. It would be somebody like weird that you'd never expect. Who? It like be, Zoe? Like Janice. Who's Janice? The one with the blonde braids, or was that just Muppet Show? I don't know. I'm so confused. Okay, wait. Sesame Street. I tuned out my whole childhood, and then I smoked a lot of pot, so I don't know anything. Who has the biggest cock on Sesame Street? It would be like someone you wouldn't expect. Ben Vereen? Like Bert. Like like Bert. Like in the gay community, they'd be like, she's a real pain in the ass, but she's hung like a fucking ox. Yeah. Like they would refer to Bert as she. Like she thinks who she is with that. It's amazing Ernie hasn't left her, that bitch, but she's hung like a fucking... (laughs) 
Manimal. I mean, <laughs> Manimal. Uh, God. It's like the only redeeming quality of fucking the two of them with those eyebrows. I can't. That is the best voice ever. Happy Gay Pride. Can you sing for me, but away from the mic a little? That's uh, one of those voices. Yeah, like no, that. the one you know I love. Life turns on a dime. <laughs> Um, <laughs> wait, wait, what's one that I can... The one that you always sing. Kiss today goodbye <laughs> and point me towards tomorrow. <laughs> we did what we had to do. <laughs> so someone is calling. Can we sing it together? Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Kiss the day goodbye. Kiss the day goodbye. The sweetness and the sorrow the sweetness and the sorrow we, we did what we had to do now listen most of those people from the original chorus and my toes dead. fell off they're dead they quit show business they had a moment where bloomingdale's was selling chorus line t-shirts and beach towels and now most of them are dead some of them are working many of them have perished wait what's the song that won <laughs> Singular sensation, every little step she makes. One fight, suddenly nobody else will do. We're going to lose you listeners. You know you'll never be. Why? People love when I sing and they love when you <laughs> sing. You have a great voice. All I want is a dildo. In my ass. A dildo to call my own. Yeah, let's sing that like a Broadway song. Dildo the That's musical. Bro- yeah, Broadway song. Is it purple? Is it green? Is it brown? <gasps> Does it look like caramel? A dildo of my own. I didn't know. I was walking home. I didn't know if the dildo was a cone. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Always, I just got my period. It always goes to that. Always, <laughs> out of town tryouts. It clo- Dildo the Musical closed in Boston for rewrites. Hey, how you doing? I'm here for Dildo the Musical. Hello? Hello? I'm here for Dildo the Musical. I think the best part about a dildo <laughs> is that you don't have to put it inside of you. You can just say, like, I get an A for effort. All right, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to go there. Years ago, about 11 years ago on Christopher Street, I went into one of the shops. Yeah. And I bought a thing. I bought, it vibrates though, but it looks like flesh. Okay. It's not as soft and floppy as a dildo. And the man behind the counter was like extra nice to me. Like, like you could tell that he didn't want, you could tell his subtext was like, I would not judge anybody. You can buy whatever you want to put up your asshole. Like Anus. He was, he was whole pocket, whole puncher. Hole puncher? Hole puncher. Use this fist for a hole puncher. Take a gamble. See if you can touch your spine. Uh, so I bought oh, a thing no. that looked small. And when I got it home, it it looked like it looked like a freeway divider. It looked seriously it looked like a, it looked like a toll plaza when I got it out of the store. Like it was small compared to everything else hanging on the wall. It looked like like the World Trade Center and the like skyscrapers were hanging on the wall sized dildos. And I seriously like it's. I threw it. I think it's you'll. You're staying at my place tonight. You look behind the TV. I think there's a dildo back there that looks like a dead puppy or a dead like. Oh, do you mind if I keep it? <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been used. Is it dusty? It's like a big. I'm trying to think of what kind of. Is like it a, in the plastic? No, it's not in the plastic. Does anymore. it smell? No, it's. I never used it. It's just. It's like a big, big like. What's Is a it really, edible? It's like a big, heavy eel. Can I beat myself with it? Yes, it's hard. It, it is. It's hard because it has you have to put batteries in it. Oh, I'm not getting batteries for that shit. Why? I'll just shake it. But you don't well, the jackhammer thing. No, the the vibrating thing. No, of is course what it's I have to get a vibrator. I can't like vibrator. I, I know. Of course I have to get a vibrator. <laughs> of course I have to get a vibrator. <laughs> I love it. Come That's on. the only thing that makes it work. Come on, come on. Come on. It vibrates. Let's go. Let's go. <sighs> let's go. Give me my keys. Let's go for a ride. Go. I, I'll drive. Let me put it in you. Let me drive. Let me put it in you. Just put it in me while I drive. I'll spit on it. If it ain't, if it ain't, if it ain't spit, it ain't love. Let me, let me put it in you. As <laughs> ropes have come. I'm sorry. I'm help sorry. Me. Help. I didn't think I was going to come that fast. Oh, Listen. I just killed a dog. <laughs> that wasn't a dog. That was my mother. But it's Hello? okay. It's okay. Hello, Sheila. Oh. So let's talk about food. 
Okay, so in Pittsburgh, we didn't have any pierogies or kielbasa. And also, it turns out that Heinz ketchup is apparently from Pittsburgh because my stomach got upset and I couldn't enjoy any of those things. Oh, yeah, I know. I ate so much cheese. I ate I like too. different. Okay, so I ate like string cheese that you get at the rest stop. I ate. Um, and, and then the I cubes, would just get like yeah cubes squares. of cheese, and then someone gave me a ton of cheese, and then I, I literally probably ate about two and a half pounds of cheese, and I wonder why I've had a horrible stomach thing for two days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like the way there, I ate a ton of it, and my stomach was upset. I couldn't go out. How much cheese do you think, how much cheese do you think we ate? Like the moon quarter. I ate a lot more than you did. The way home you did, because I stopped. The way there, I, I kept up with Remember I was going to buy cream cheese to dip cheese in? <laughs> Yeah, Frank had... <laughs> I was going to dip Frank, the cheese stick in Frank cream cheese. Frank was like, do you want cheese sticks? So I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what kind? And I'm like, string whatever, cheese or whatever. So he Jack. got every kind in at 7-Eleven or whatever. At the rest stop. The truck stop. <laughs> where, the gl- where the glory hair is. Yeah. I, someone put their gear in me and then I had a string cheese. I was at the glory hole and a deer head came through it. I know what to do with it, you know? I said, put it on your head. I have a deer fetish. And then, <laughs> and then Frank was holding the cheese, and he said, "Should I get this too?" And it was cream cheese. It was cream cheese. And I said, "Do you want me?" I said, "What are you going to dip in the cream cheese?" And he said, "The cheese." And I was like, "We both need a program." <laughs> because I was we, like, because I thought it was okay. Well, it is okay because it's no. Carbs. If I wasn't with you, I would have had the plastic wrapper. It's, <laughs> it's no carbs. I would have eaten the guy that was who rang us up. Okay, the woman that rang me up seriously. I thought it was a man. She's losing a vertebra a day because she was so miserable. Like every day, she'll wake up and yawn, and another vertebra will go like, "I'm out of here," and it disintegrates because her misery. She's marinating her bones in hatred and misery. She Everyone's so miserable. Unhappy. I swear to God, everywhere I go, people are miserable, especially in New York. It's crazy. Well, everyone's upset about what's going on. Right. So. <sighs> it's, it's, a, it's a tense time. Yeah, it is tense. I mean, it's very tense, but you just have to keep eating greens and fruit and turkey and chicken, too. You have to eat <laughs> greens and fruit and turkey and chicken, too. Now I'll go. You look so tiny sitting there from me. You're wearing black. You look so skinny. <laughs> I don't know how you eat that celery. It makes me puke. I have to pee. Do You're you have to pee? Do you have to pee? Pee on my face and make me feel free. Pee. Come up my hole oh, and no. impregnate oh, no. me. No. Impregnate me. No. <laughs> impregnate. no, 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 no. Wait, did no. you say pee on my face? Uh, yes. So why but- can you say pee on my face, but I can't say come up my hole? There's a big difference between saying pee on my face and come in my house. Nah, there ain't no motherfucking difference. You said I said come up my ass. And you said, my face. <laughs> Alex just rolled his eyes because we're doing black characters. Um, we have a special guest today that I'm so excited about. I know. We, we were just, we were like rambling and singing and talking about anus and food. And then. Uh, and golden shower. Yeah. And, and then he, he came. He came. On my face. I came just from listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how, that's how good we that's are. That's how gay people are. Because we come when we're told to come. Mm. You know what I mean? But you can come on command. I can come in no. color. I'm color. serious. No. Color of the rainbow. Can you really? Can you come on command? No way. What's your I'm latency? I'm completely dis- disassociated. <laughs> I'm dead inside. You can't come on command? No. Are you kidding me? I, well, uh, come on I don't command. think anything comes on command. It, I yeah, think like, it takes come on... a certain revving. You mean if someone goes, come now, you can just come? Well, it was my livelihood for a very long time. Was it? Were you a hooker? I was a prostitute. I live for you. I would have hired you. I was an escort. I knew you were. It's not a rash. That's. I know what that is. It's something else. That's my boy. No, I, I wasn't. I'm lucky if I can. I'm lucky if I can come home after a long day. Let that's alone. baloney. I remember the first like it was like eight years ago or something. The first time I saw you, I was like, I'd pay for it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Really? I would, I would pay for if Frank. I, if I were a man, a gay man, yeah. I would pay for Frank too. Absolutely. And I've want there's because I know times, his girth certificate is legit. Yes, I've seen his cock down you my have. throat, and it is very That's large. My friend. That's my friend. <laughs> I feel objectified. Yeah. That's how Can you Can we know. please really introduce him? We've been talking. I don't want to. I don't want to be. Known. I feel unsafe. <laughs> Meron Kagani is here. You guys are very. Yay! Sweet to me. I love you. Guys you. Are very sweet to me. I love you. I love you. We love Mayron. I love you guys. We no, do. And we we're, really we're do. We're especially grateful that he got here today on this ridiculous August day in New York City. It's just a million degrees. Isn't it out. November? 
I thought it was Christmas. Oh no. Um, <laughs> Where are you from? Are you from Boston? Where were you born? I was born in London. My mm-hmm. family's Iranian, and I grew up, like, around Boston. You were born in London? Mm-hmm. Really? And mm-hmm. how long How long you live in London for? Uh, very briefly. Like, like how? three months until I was allowed to fly. <laughs> like, they don't let little newborns fly. Yeah. Oh, so it was just well, me now and my you're mom not allowed shopping. anymore also. Oh, I just can't leave the country anymore. Yeah. That's, that's done. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, one thing. They don't let newborns fly. Why? Did you wear, like, the burqa at that age? No, I did. I was. <laughs> I was in full hijab, <laughs> and, and that was. They and they thought, fly? Yeah, no, and like everyone, we're like, he's the bomb, he's the bomb, and then. Um, <laughs> no, she's just cute. She's not the bomb. No, girl. Um, isn't it like? How is it? Sometimes when I see the hijab in like shock pink, uh huh. Like how come? Like oh, now, I am tired wait, of modern wait, Muslims. Like, Get is, the fuck out of here. Mousy brown hair is not okay, but like a hot pink wrap around. <laughs> That says, see me from across the pub. <laughs> Poor things to be called mousy, to have their brown hair called mousy. Um, you know, the, 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 the reality is that um, I think everybody wants to belong, mm-hmm. you know, but they're still willing to say that they belong to this uh, very old way of thinking that's in no way modern. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you know what I, it's, yeah. it's kind of pick a lane. It's a pick a lane moment for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe in sort of buffet religiosity where it's like, oh, well, we I don't either we believe I in buffet religiosity is to say that, like, I'm going to have these items from the religion and its doctrine. But this stuff I don't agree with. So that doesn't apply to me. Like the part where the Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination like that. I don't agree with. But love your neighbor is totally me. Right. Like oh, I, that I, I, I is don't, buffet religiosity. Okay. I, ha- I don't want to. I'm just going to tell you really quick. That is my biggest thing with religion like i'm not i don't get upset with people who are like psycho religious Mm. because they're at least sticking to it yeah but the people that pick and choose what they want it drives me nuts well and it co-signs the extremist it does i don't care how you frame it but it's like you're hanging out with you're in the same boat ultimately you're you're hitching your wagon to Mm -hmm. this to the name that that is or that that's problematic right Mm-hmm. And so if you have your own cord- a code of beliefs and a per- and everyone's relationship with God is personal, there's mm-hmm. no such thing as like a shared, right? So mm-hmm. then, you know, have, have some, gra- you know, put on your big girl pants and say that you have your own system of beliefs. Right. right. That's it. That's all you have to do. But no, it's like, I'm Christian, I'm Muslim, I'm yakety yak. It's like, I'm Orthodox. Yeah, I, right. I, I totally agree. It's, it's very busy. It's a very busy way of being. Mm-hmm. I wasn't We're, raised with... Are you oh, sure you've never hooked? Because I would. <clears throat> if I, I looked like, like you, I would hook. I feel like if I did, uh huh. I don't feel like it, like I know it in my gut. I feel like if I did, I would seriously, I would get crabs or gonorrhea the first time out. The, but like I both know of it. those can be treated. Yeah, but it's not, <laughs> not, not modern day crabs. <laughs> Seriously. Why, Why are we you, being you could sick? wear a tarp. You ab- absolutely I like a, did a man sized dental dam. <laughs> a man sized dental dam. <laughs> that's what we that's what we want. Isn't that just a pool cover? Girl Oh <laughs> Wait, did I, you, do you, I, would, I can't walk into somebody's apartment. Because the thing is like I know from like some of the photos I get, even in my Facebook inbox, message box, hmm. I couldn't walk into somebody's apartment. And see someone's someone face down on their bed with their ass already spread, uh-huh. like this seriously, like a winking possessed walnut. I would vomit for money. <laughs> it's not you're not doing like, this. What kind of money it's are we talking? Money. Are we talking like Girl, a used Toyota for, SUV for money? A yes. Twenty five dollar weeknight spot. That's why, like instead it would be four hundred dollars. And yes, you're going to see someone's uh-huh. dirt star. You know what I, I mean? I don't think I could do it I if someone had their f- anus spread. Four hundred dollars. Sure, you can. Look at anus for four hundred dollars versus like no. uh, tell you know, jokes for tell, seven tell jokes people to, that are to, to remind me of my mother and I've father. Done jokes to Orange for County, less than chicken fingers. I can't. I need <laughs> if I can make a down payment on an SUV, then maybe that's it. Because I really need a car right now. That's okay. something to think about. Okay, yeah, an SUV. I want an SUV because he likes it's it's male. It's safe. That's so sweet. It's male to be safe when you. No, get I'm a, sorry. Uh, yeah, SUV. I drive an SUV. I don't. I like it because it feels like like. Male, like, like a man. Yeah, Whoa. like I wouldn't drive like a little pink meat, like a. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah. All I want, uh-uh. all I want. Dog, add the way. I had a Miata. 
I see there was a truck coming into the left lane when I had a Miata, and my, the horn is just like that. Do it. Just do it. And then, I started to go up to the And then I held onto the horn for so long, it changed from like a B to a B flat. Yeah. And, and, and I got sideswiped and almost killed, and he pulled off. I, so I no ate a Miata. Miata once after a bad <laughs> show. Yeah. Well, is ready. this a food show? Yeah, it's so that's everything. what we wanted to do. It's we, everything. We want to tell you. Because it's my cheat day, I swear to do God. Do you have a vibe? What is, like, it's, it's, a, it's kind of an indulgence. It's just everyone's fat pig is their own. Jessica, what's in that Poland Spring bottle? Urine. It's ha- hot, <laughs> hot old writer's ham. Urine. It's ham. <laughs> it looks like it looks like the Poland Spring bottles you see on the side of the highway. He said hot old writer's urine. <laughs> it looks it like, is. It, it looks, looks like homeless. It looks like urine. It's well, no, it's, no, it's it has, you it guys does. are out of your mind. It's brown. It what kind of foam. urine? What kind of water? Girl. What kind of water? It's morning. Oh my god! It's half diet snapple and half water. Oh, you're my favorite. Yeah, I don't get to have treats anymore, Doris and Valeria. Are those I your couldn't people? think of a name. Who's oh. Floreria? I don't know. Just go with it's it. Funny you said That's what you get when today. you prostitute yourself. You get Floreria. <laughs> Y'all got some Floreria, and I don't know where to go to cure it. <laughs> it's funny you said Doris today because I saw an old person with those cataract glasses on. Yeah. And whenever I see them, I always think of like them being in a punk band from like the eighties. And I was thinking, like, what's a name for like a punk band with those old people? And I thought Doris and the Needles. Yeah. Oh, that's a good Wouldn't name. Wouldn't that be kind of hot? Yeah. <laughs> Maron. <laughs> Do you have, if you have a main vice, what is it? Um, is it a food? Is it food, cigarettes, I sex, don't, gambling? I, I smoke Coke. And, mm. um, it's deep. Thank you. Do you? No. Oh, I've smoked Coke. No, I, wait, girl, smoke. I've smoked everything. I don't uh-huh. do any of it anymore because I'm 41. Do you okay. know what I mean? It yeah. just doesn't, it doesn't play out as nicely either. No. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like when you're 20 and you're delusional and you're like, I'm high and I look great. Yeah. You can hit the mirror and be like, I kind of look great. But when you do it at 40, you're like, girl. Um, my main vice is probably, uh, probably video games at this age. It's the last one I've got. I don't drink anymore. Uh-huh. I, uh, so I that have- was a thing. What? The drinking. Oh, I used to drink. I drank, I drank better and harder than anyone you know. Mm-hmm. I, remember, I remember you re- reading that when you wrote that. I was that. awesome at it. And I, I had to you, quit because I'm diabetic. Loved it. And you loved it. You loved drinking, you I said, I still right? love it. I would right. still love it. I would still love it. How long ago did you stop? Three months. Okay. That's so good. Cold turkey, no Very, support. Yeah. yeah. That's the best way because then you can complain a lot and be <laughs> negative. After the diagnosis? <laughs> after the diabetes? Uh, I, was di- I was diagnosed five years ago and then I just didn't ever take care uh, of it. Oh, okay. And then... Uh, three months ago, I got super sick with mm. it, and I, like had to have it come to Jesus. Got it. Ah! Right. right, 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 right. And so, uh, I quit sugar. I quit booze, and like literally, there's no sugar at all in my diet. And I happen to be having a marijuana edible right now, but it is cheat day. <laughs> it's my first cheat day in three months today. Yeah, like, what I'm made from you? What made today the cheat day? Partner. That's interesting. What, what? So part of it is that um, my weight loss and whatnot had plateaued. And if you're losing weight fairly rapidly, which happens if you go full tilt ketogenic like I have. Okay. Like I'm, I literally have the diet of uh, a, like a nomadic Arctic. When you say no sugar, do you person. mean no berries? No, no, Nothing. No, no fruits. Wow. No fruit. No. So that no sugar. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. look amazing. Yeah. Uh, you get re- out of here. I'm, no, no. I I'm not just saying that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we hung out the other day and then you just walked in and I was like, wow, he really, like, you look healthy. You look good. I feel healthy and I don't, uh, it's weird. So the key is the, a true ketogenic diet, right? It, it really is based on an Arctic diet. Okay. So, um, it mimics ketogenic. Uh, ketogenic. Have you ever like, heard of that? No, uh, a long time ketogenic? ago, but I don't remember okay. what it's, it is. It, okay. it is such an absence of carbohydrate in your diet that your body burns fat for energy. Right. So, like, picture a tribe uh, sort of walking around the Arctic. Uh, there's absolutely no farmable land, right? <laughs> and then they ha- they find a walrus, they boil it for two days, and all they do is eat <laughs> blubber and <laughs> walrus anus. And then is the walrus alive when they throw it in the boiling absolute, water? Absolutely, absolutely. It has to be, and it sounds like a lobster when it's boiling. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh my god, that's the same sound my dad made when he came. <laughs> Wait, wait. So, 
was I love it, that. Was it hard? I'm, I'm in heaven right now. Was so it, you only eat co- was protein? It, basically, and like lettuce. Was it hard in the beginning when you started? Because this time, this time when I got a bad health report in uh-huh. Jan, in February or March, uh-huh. it wasn't as hard for me as it always has been before. Yeah. Was it easier this time it was, around? It, it, I mean, committing to the lifestyle change, just knowing like the consequence that's on the other side of it, that's certainly motivating. And it's more motivating than anything has been in my life. Me like, too. I was 100 points shy of the mortality range in terms uh, of my blood sugar. Fuck. Wow. So it was, I, I really took it to a very bad place. Uh, I got a MRSA infection. I got a skin infection. Like it was mm. gruesome and yeah. painful. And I was delirious for three days. Like it was. Oh my God. It was an actual problem crisis. Mm-hmm. So on the the like eating turkey do you know what i mean like yeah. deli meat yeah hardly feels like that great a concession compared to what you were going let's say through. being hospitalized or losing a foot are we, are we not supposed to have dirt deli meat because of the sugar am i right uh, I don't. it depends on the deli meat right like you know what i mean no yeah. honey ham i'm not honey so what made you decide to have today be a cheat day so no one because uh no and i both realized over the weekend that we needed a cheat day that mm-hmm. our metabolism you're needed. both doing it you and your partner are both he doing it. is the i have the most supportive partner in the entire world and uh when i was sick like literally delirious and bed sick he threw out all the food in the house and restocked wow all the that's food. amazing wow. like when i woke up the next day the fridge was full of like, oh my god diabetes friendly grub and he's that's awesome. That's I mean, I didn't. I'm, I didn't marry dumb. I married smart. You know? Right. <laughs> and uh, right. and yeah. So uh, over the weekend, we both realized that our weight loss is sort of plateauing, mm-hmm. and so that's when you need to do a cheat day because if your body is losing a bunch of weight, it it starts to hang on to the. Because I was body too. Weight. I was t- I was stuck at two thirty four. Yeah. And then I had two cheat days, and then all of a sudden blah, it started going down again. That's exactly what but I was stuck there for almost a month. Otherwise, your body's like I'm starving. And I have, like, your body has a biological imperative to not starve to death. Wow. So it's not going to give up everything. I didn't realize that. That's what it is, I was is, stuck Oker. at 234 for a month. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, it started going down. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to gain weight. Yeah. And it went down to 223. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm Good curious, you, I'm curious, w- emotionally, yeah. seriously, yeah. what do you think got you to the point you did with food? Because we talk about that a lot. Oh, I live for that question. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a, I I come from an abnormally uh, sort of uh, an understanding family. Um, Un-understanding. You know, they they do not understand. They are, uh, throughout, you know, my whole life, they've been sort of more of an obstacle than Mm -hmm. a boon. Are they in Boston? They are. Right. And so... You know, it starts there, and then, you know, I'm kind of an extreme character. You can trace it to the Islamic revolution in Iran that, like, displaced my family and, you know, destroyed our wealth. Um, You know, there there are just a million burdens that you sort of carry, and then escapism is to be expected. I totally understand. The first thing I just, of course. And I, because we're both eating well also, Mm -hmm. like the three of us are. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking about lately, and I was just thinking about when you were talking, like, what are you doing to replace those feelings? Because, like, for, with me, food or drugs or anything are like the whatever I'm using to not feel the feelings. So I feel like I'm feeling a lot of feelings right now. Right. And I replaced eating and binging with flirting. It's crazy. But are, you it's being, be- it, are you being a tramp? It's become... It makes mm, sense. I'm not acting on it, but it's seriously become, like, an obsession. Oh, like I stopped, I've stopped writing comedy in point because I've been doing like so much flirtation. And flirtation like, like online, or you oh, go to a bar and you just sort of bait the children with your nest. But let's get back to you. So, <laughs> well, no, I mean, <laughs> have, you you know, re- have you replaced it with anything? With, uh, I don't know, like flirting. Like, well, anything, like, like any- ambiguous flirting. Or Gambling, like, do you feel flirting. more angry, do more spoke- sad, more I mean, anxious? I, I, or that, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, the spectrum of emotions is still there. I still eat weed. Mm-hmm. So right. weed is still part of my life. I I am not committed to a life of sobriety. This life is too long. Um, and yeah, I, so just because I'm not drinking doesn't mean I'm not high. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm still sorry. very much avoiding my feelings. <laughs> so the, the escape, uh, the escape is, did, is that fair? That's a completely yeah. normal yeah, answer. I am sure. not. I am not confronting shit. No, uh, I have a great therapist. I love him. We're talking through stuff. Um, honestly, if it's replaced by anything, it's replaced by vitality. Like I actually wow. live and participate That's in the world answer. more right. than I did. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Does that make any well, sense? Do you enjoy it, the world more? I, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, I have to. What else have I got? Right. You know? I, I feel like I'm, I can't help myself. I'm enjoying the world more. I'm still miserable. Yeah. And constantly yeah, saying that I want to Yeah, but you're very magnetic to homosexuals. <laughs> yeah, Frank. but that doesn't, that's not like a happy... Frank, you have that man thing. That's not, a ha- that's not always a happy thing. That's like when somebody's like, oh, you have a Volkswagen bug. You must be so happy. Like that one trait, it's kind of like... It doesn't mean I'm magnetic to the people I want to be magnetic to. Right. It doesn't mean I'm magnetic to them because I'm funny. You no, know it's because I mean? you're masculine. It's, it's, Let's it be very clear. Mas- and yes. then I'll have homosexuals be angry at me and say to me, well, I'm, you're masculine. Did mas- you hear how angry I was when I called them masculine? Your yes. masculinity is why <laughs> what you're self-loathing in that masculinity. It's not real. It's why no, Trump No, yours is legitimate. I know other people or, where it's um, not legitimate. Somebody uh, at, in, at a show, big gay pride show in Wyoming. Are you a homosexual? Are you sure you're a homosexual? He was confrontational about it. It's like this is new. No, no, no. They all want to kiss your boner. 2017 thing where masculinity and the gay guy is like this taboo thing. You're not allowed to like it. You're not allowed to say I like masculine. Oh, please or masculine. don't make a victim of yourself when I'm you n- are. I'm not at all. But it's like when you are coveted. It's like I'm certainly not coveted in, in arenas of life that are important to me at this point. Like Does that with, make sense? hipsters? No, what? Like, like in Williamsburg? No, no. He means with like career and shows I mean, career and stuff like and, that. I mean show business and career and stuff like that. It's been it's been a that's what he wants. Extra long struggle. So the other stuff, yeah, it's it's there, but it's sort of like it's like growing up with money. After a while, it doesn't matter. I didn't grow up with any money, but I know people who do or have. And after a while, it's like, okay, now who am I? I did, and it does matter. <laughs> I couldn't be more happy that I have seven trust funds. I don't care if I get if you, I ever get pounded again, you, I can buy whatever car I want. You look so unhappy, though. Really, you're you're happy. Yeah, I always look unhappy. I'm an old Jew. Do you know one old Jew that looks happy and satisfied? Well, that, no. Your friend that passed away, she, what was her name? Ro, what was, what was Rose. Ro, I was going to say Hotel Rose. Rose Horowitz was so, she always looked happy. You always looked happy. She unhappy. had a lot of work done. Oh, so, yes. oh I see. Yes, yeah, she. So it was she frozen. She had work every day. <laughs> she, she had work done every day. You could, tell her her, the, you could tell her her husband got hit by a car and she'd smile. She looked, it was confusing. <laughs> She'd tell you. One time she came to me with a huge smile and said, I have liver cancer and there's no hope. And she was laughing. (laughs) So uh, this is kind of like our kind of like our gay pride episode. Okay. (laughs) And I just want to say that I read your post a couple of times. We both on, did, yeah. yeah, yeah you're on Facebook, mm-hmm. and and please tell people your full name and how to spell it so they can follow you and stuff like that. Seriously, it's Miran Kagani, and it's K H A G H A N I. That's the last name, and the first name is Mehran, M-E-H-R-A-N. Yeah, because you guys got to follow him. And first of all, he's hysterically funny and such a great person. And the post that you wrote was so powerful yeah, to me. Can you talk about it that for a second? It was just 10 seconds. I literally just dashed something off very quickly. Well, it's, it's a, it. it is a profound story, though. It's, you know, it is. It, it's, uh, it's I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. So when I was 15, I d- I. Uh, I had been beating off to Muscle magazines for a few years mm-hmm. at that point, mm-hmm. but uh, I, you know, I was watch. I was at home. I watched Donahue. I remember I saw like Club Kids and Gay Kids, and I realized I wasn't the only one who was attracted to my own gender. And I legit thought I was the only one mm. for a very long time. Where was home at that point? Uh, when it was in Massachusetts, okay. Lexington, Massachusetts, uh, and then. Uh, right around 15, like I was involved in theater, I was in chorus, I saw other uh, sort of people on television who were out, and it was, and it sort of normalized. It felt normalized for them. At least their reality was normalized. And I, uh, I thought, that sounds great. And I decided to come out to my family, and it ended very badly. Uh, there was uh, violence and... Uh, the, sort of my my journals were read and torn apart, and I was eventually kicked out. I was kicked out of the house for a couple of weeks. And, At fifteen, or uh, sixteen or so, fifteen, sixteen, yeah, fifteen. Where did you go when you? I were... went. I stayed with my friend Christina. I I lived at my friend Christina's house, uh, and you know, <laughs> and so the the story I posted was when I told my dad and. 
uh, I told my father, and he, when while I was telling him, he was he he like intuited what I was going to say to him, and he kind of turned beet red and started shaking his head, and his eyes welled up with tears, and he was like, "Don't say it, mm-hmm. don't say whatever you're going to say," and I was like, "Okay, well, I like boys. I might have even said I'm bisexual, but that's." Yeah, we, Comedy a, a, lot, a lot day. of us, a lot of us did do. That. Yeah, I did well, that it's, too. It's right. just the toe in the pool, kids. You know, right. it's just the toe in the pool. I'm not saying the bisexuality isn't out there. There are opportunities. No, I mean, right. I, I don't think I'm fully a hundred percent a lesbian. I mean, I, it's, I mean, I, I, I really hate, don't. Yeah, but anyway, so you you told him and his have reaction. You two, have you two done it? No, the two of us could never. We used yes. to, but only the real way. Yes. yes. Yeah, anal. Yes. Um, Glory hole anal. Mm-hmm. That's real. So. You told him and the so I told him was... and then the reaction was was dramatic and he was like I'll kill myself and he freaked out and he left and then he came back uh, shortly after that uh, and said that um, that he he just started he went into an anecdote and he had had my father is a neuropsychiatrist or was a neuropsychiatrist and he had a clinic in Iran and because he came from uh, sort of extreme poverty he would see a lot of pro bono patients, like villagers in Iran. Like, right. they're huge illiterate, like, mm-hmm. where America has suburbs, Iran has, you know, cities, sort of like mini cities, but then it has straight up villages where it's still a rural economy and, uh, you know, people craft and trade mm-hmm. and lots of people are bound to be illiterate in these in these situations. So uh, some villagers came and uh, saw my dad for some pro bono psychiatric care. They were like, our kid is gay. And my father explained to them that uh, there is no cure for homosexuality, that uh, the only thing he could do was abstain. And then the parents came back a couple of months later to tell my dad that their kid had killed themselves, that the boy had killed himself. And my father said, it's for the best. And Mm -hmm. he gave me that story the day I came out to him. And I was already like getting beat up from a pretty young age. At school or at home? By my family at home. So. It was this uh, – I, I had been suicidal from, like, the age of fucking 11 or something. Mm-hmm. So this was, like, a profound nudge yeah. towards doing it. And I and my father – he He's an actual story, neuropsychiatrist. When he like, he wasn't a baloney one. Right. Yeah, he, but I, I truly believe that he was nudging me toward, <gasps> uh, like, sparing the family embarrassment. Do you speak with him today? He's sparing, dead. Sparing yourself. Do you speak with your mom? Uh, I do a bit, but, uh, you know, I, it's, it becomes, people like have, there's such a narrative woven around forgiveness in our world. Oh, uh, I'm not and, always on board. And it's right. like, what are you really asking of people? Right. Like, yes. You know, are you, the, the common sense dictates <clears throat> that people have a certain divine animal right to protect themselves. And mm, I just got chills. Uh, right. if, if. You know, we're this this onus of responsibility that we're putting on people to uh, mend fences with people who have hurt them and who are unrepentant. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it. Forgiveness is supposed to happen for ourselves. It's supposed to happen for us so that we can function. I mean, if it's fathomable. If it, but I mean, if it's possible, a, a fuck you narrative is just as I was wonderful. Say, it's is it just as fresh. Right? Where would you say? Yeah, I've do, done that with some people where just I'm just like, fuck they're not. You. They're not gonna listen they're mm. not going to apologize mm. you know and i'm just gonna i have to get rid of them mm. i just have to get them out of my life i mean they're abusive the, and, but of course life is nuanced relationships are nuanced certainly family relationships are nuanced right. these are people who you know at one point also like held you as a baby and there are certain like animal responses to their love do you know what i mean yeah sure. do you have siblings i do how many are two older Oh, like me. The, the, I feel like I've talked the, so much the, about myself. It feels narcissistic. The baby. It's it's not because you know you're our you're our guest and we don't have a lot of guests and we're excited to have you. I love you and guys. we talk constantly constantly. About ourselves. Constant. I mean, we just yeah. did for a while before, <laughs> before you, you got came here. here. Where do you think this comes in with regard to stand up comedy? Was humor a survival or your imagination a way out? I mean, I've always been pretty theatrical. I mean, Theatr- that's part of like the that just the hand I was dealt is that. Uh, in in an otherwise academic family where there was no history of sort of performance, uh, th- like there are no entertainers in my family's oh history. My <laughs> uh, like I I was literally standing on on lavish dinner tables at the age of two. This like, is why you're who's so ready for a show. This, it, it's why you're so brilliant. It's like when you have ingredients in making some sort of recipe. This is the ingredients to make a great performer and a great comedian. 
uh, this this uh, life and this past. It really is. It's why you are so real and so raw and so entertaining. On the other side of it, it's like, you know, if if I had been spared all of this adversity, I'm sure, like, who's to say I wouldn't have thrived in a completely different way? Yeah. I might know eight forms of dance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I might... You might have been a tax attorney. I, I mean. might have been a tax attorney. You have no idea what would have happened, to, like... In a in a nurturing uh, environment, right? But I just I, feel I, like I yeah, don't know. I feel like it's so important to talk about this stuff because mm. you know I had <clears throat> pretty good situation no matter what I told my parents. I mean, they weren't so happy with certain things, but they still stuck by me and supported me, and so did Frank. Yep. As did so I. it's very very important for people to hear this stuff because mm. I have tons of friends who've been. How long have you two been friends? We've been friends for maybe. We met in two thousand five. Amazing. And then got close about four or five years ago? Yeah, like probably. Like close, close. We always stayed in touch, but got close, close a few years ago. I love it. But I have more of my own stuff with who I am, more than what other people, you know. I've like seen how it on stage. People, yeah. <laughs> more than right. like how other people judge me. I have more of my own stuff. And I'm just so always impressed by someone who's had such a hard situation with coming out and, and telling your parents and dealing with that and, and, you know, all that, the violence and all of it. And still just flourishing and being who you are and showing people it's okay to love who you are and to come. It's so important. Right. Somebody I went out with is is now a, a, a supporting Trump conservative radio show host, Pray the Gay Away, mm. because his mother refused to talk with him. Refuse I, over the course mm, of years. Mm. I was in a long-term relationship with him. Mm. Um, another moved back to Cairo because he felt that after his mother was killed in a car accident, he would be closer to God as a practicing Muslim if he went home and wasn't gay anymore. He gave up his political asylum in America. So to have flourished in the face of such adversity really is incredibly... It must be it's what weird. what gay pride is about. After, after um, being buggered, right? After receiving, after taking it in the can. Oh, after being plowed. Plowed. Fucked uh -huh. up the plowed, ass. I think. Yeah. Yep. Going through the toll. Right, sure. The cum cave being shot into. That'll Don't chestnut. bring up ropes. The wizard sleeve being <laughs> lit up on being fire. shook out. Ropes of cum shot on the wall. Yeah. He's saying it to be aggressive. He gets aggressive. <laughs> That's sexy. I'm, I'm sure I don't it appeals like it comes to a up, certain... It came up about an hour ago. She doesn't like it because she's sexually aggressive. We've I not am been, sexually aggressive, but I hate the word ropes time. of cum. Ro ro oh, I love ropey cum. <laughs> ropes of cum reminds me No, of, not ropes of cum, just ropey It's so not sexual to me, it reminds me of like draperies from the 70s with like braids. Yes, those ropes, those ropes. sashes, honey. Yes, <laughs> interior Anything design. Anything with ass, I'm okay with dick. You see, I think. Mehran, did you wrap the drapes around you when you were a kid and say the nominees for best cinematography? Like I, a, I did that. Shit you not. Uh -huh. I, I do a weekly free show on Monday nights in, in the East Village. Where? And at a bar called Pink's. It's Monday nights at 8. Okay. You're both, you're there this coming Monday. Yes. Um, but I was, uh, I wrapped myself in the curtains last night and literally like oh, that's made so weird. an evening dress out of them. Separated birth. Isn't that weird? No, it's of weird course you it's just not. said that. Well, I've never well, done that. Well, it's just weird because I've, I haven't done it in many, many moons. I and, do it constantly. And I did it and I realized that it was distracting from the comic who was on stage, so I had to stop doing it. <laughs> Wait a minute. There was a comic on stage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like feeling myself <laughs> oh, I in thought a you did it black when you were again. on stage. Oh, no. No, I, no, no. It always amazes it me, me when playing. I do it on stage and it doesn't get a laugh. It <laughs> amazed to me. Do you know the whole time you guys are talking, I keep thinking I want to sleep in a coffin? I swear to God, that's what's going on in my mind. I don't you. know. I love you. I don't know. I have to I say, with all, of the fu with, with all of the funerals that I've been to in my family, they look so comfortable. That's what I mean. Oh it God. feels very the nice. The wrinkles oh and the satin. satin. I just thought the satin with the oh quilts. Oh, my God. I need a little bit more room in mine, though. I do, too. I need a fridge on the side. I do you want actually to want to go into a coffin? I, I would wouldn't mind sleeping I in one. I would sleep in one. I'd sleep in one if, if it were, it, like... It's too, like, shouldery. No. It's it was, too shouldery if it were the size of a nice twin, like a jumbo twin. Yeah, if it were for someone who was like living the 600 pound life, right. I would be very happy. A jumbo <laughs> twin, deeper than normal, and I want some kind of like ventilation with like a little, yes, like, a, like a window oxygen. peep. I want a window peep on the closable lid. And some music and on the side that you can turn on. Yes. And on. Yeah, it's great. Yes. yes. Maybe a little ice machine and a like... <laughs> I would do you all yes. oh, a my plug God. for my vibrator. Room for somebody else? <sighs> nah. Yeah. No, I don't want someone else in my coffin. I bed. want. So, I, I seriously want some fucking wet, moist action splashing and I'm sloshing gonna, in seriously, my coffin. Seriously, I'm gonna have to go to therapy again this <laughs> Why? week. 
poking and prodding and finding that perfect spot, you know? I, I used to know, going on I, I and used to on. know a fairly famous <laughs> drummer <laughs> whose favorite thing to do would be to lay down tarp. A man or a woman? A man. Okay. And he would he would, he would cover himself in <laughs> lubricant yeah. with a woman, and that was their sex act. I understand. Tommy it was Lee. to just Tommy slip Lee. around each other. Phil they did, Collins. There was no, Tommy Lee. Is that what he mean? Is that what they did too? No, no. I'm asking oh, oh, who's the fan? It was Phil Collins. Be, be Karen Arthur. Carpenter. <laughs> Karen, Arthur. Car- Karen Carpenter. Karen Carpenter. My mother. It was poor Karen Carpenter. Imagine that. <laughs> it was Karen Carpenter. And then the other person comes out with like paper cuts all over them. Just... <laughs> no, they went up on fire. They went. <laughs> yes, honey. Shh, 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 shh. Oh boy. Um, yeah, I'm just saying that's a fun sex act. You said wet, moist. I don't like, I don't love oils and lubes and things because I like the person's natural, like, scent and body and stuff like that. I don't like to cover, like, I never understand. People the, always say that. The porns. Their natural scent. The porns where they have, like, creams and <laughs> pheromones. Well, I don't know what, I'm seriously, I could be sleeping with I a know porn what you animal because I, I can't smell anything. I, I do. Because tech, I, lo- I don't like those smells either, Ugh. like, fruity, vanilla. I hate it. I don't like, do you like Oh, that? No, 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 I'm not looking, I, it, like, there's no reason why a vagina should smell like strawberries. And oil, like, oil all over the night table and the bed thing and the wall. That and I don't mind. In the same breath, clock. have you a wash. You don't mind it in a hotel if a man you know what has I to mean? clean it up. Oh, yeah, wash it. Have a wash. wash. All no, of it. this is, see, this is where people go wrong. This is where it goes astray. It does no, it has nothing to do with not washing. That is that is vomit inducing. Like sleeping with someone who's not washing is not going to happen. It's disgusting. Right. I. Like, it's not happening. I mean regularly. Yeah. I yeah. mean pre game, I mean, post game. Before the act. Before the before act. Surfing. Before, before sure. the act. Yeah. Clean up. Yeah. Trim it. <laughs> Trim it. Before Trim the act. Trim it back. Yeah. And scrub it down. Uh, you know, and you have to use soap. <laughs> you can't use just water. Yes, ma'am. So we loved having you for this special gay pride I can't episode. believe I, li- I like literally came here, stressed out, cried about my father, and then left. No, right. no, no, I want people to read that story. It's really, maybe I'll read it next time. Maybe we'll read it next time. Oh, my God. It's just, it's not like really thoughtfully written or anything. It was very like... Yeah, I've had those where I just write something fast on right. Facebook and then it has a thousand people Likes that like things. it. Yeah, right. yeah. It's the way it is. Yeah. You know, it's real. I just usually show my taint. Oh, God. Uh, do you know? Like, there's money at the end of this rainbow, frankly, Adi. He wants you to, to, to uh, I almost should say, to strip. sell it to me. I, I wouldn't. Was, I'm Michael not Lu- friendless. So Michael Lucas offered me the cover of the box in 2003. Are you kidding? No, and I said no because I Are was. Are you a- uncircumcised? No. He no. only books uncircumcised. That's not true. It is true. No, it's, it's, true. Not. it's true. Oh, okay. I've never seen porn before. Okay. Well, I, actually, I slept with <laughs> Stefan Bertoli. That's not his real name, but it's his porn name. And he didn't have that pig in a blanket. And he was in some Michael Lucas films. Okay, I'm going to have to look that up. He's a trainer. Good for you. So you have this porn star but history. I'm not going to say his real like, name. Like, how dare you want a career? Ben. You've... F- ah! You've so, had- <laughs> Showbridge Studios, our fabulous Fat Pig producers, you can now find, has its very own YouTube channel with current and future Fat Pig episodes, as well as Sean Donnelly's Defend Your Movie podcast, which I was recently on, and Thought Spiral with Andy Kindler. Look for Showbridge Studios' new YouTube channel, run by Alex... Our lovely producer. What are you going to do now, Meron? Lick my phone. Um, Lick my clit. I was. Ah! Uh, I'm going to have cheat night with my husband. We're going to go and have like a cheaty dinner. What, Where are you going? Your, uh, some fabulous steakhouse. Oh, good. Ooh. I don't know which one. That's what, a great place to cheat. What's your favorite porn clips? Oh, you dirty dog. <laughs> That's how we're ending. Really? Like, like vo- is it amateur? Uh, you gr- know, I'm groups. Oh God, no! Groups, is, Ropes, straight groups kids. Is, it's distract. Let me tell you things. Things no nos are condoms. Condoms. Foreskin. No foreskin. No condoms. No foreskin. No condoms. Oh, so you like uncut? If it's, huh? No, 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 oh. no foreskin. <laughs> if it looks like an anteater, I'm out. This train's got wheels. <laughs> oh, I'm out of here. I'm like good. Oh, so we're on the same page. Leave, I got confused. Leave that spigot. <laughs> yeah, I got confused. A pig in a blanket. <laughs> yes, this train's ma'am. got wheels. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> ant eaters. Poor moi. Not gonna happen. Okay, so, play. so in other words, no Latino. <laughs> no, no Latinos. <laughs> No, I mean, they're allowed to be Latin. They just have to find God. I mean, where are you gonna... What about old Jews? <laughs> Would you Lo- I like a good piece of a Jewish nice penis. Do you, do you like Black Hawk? What the fuck is wrong with you? What? Not, we're supposed not to the, wrap not it the, up, the, and now no, we're getting into Black it's Hawk. It's not the question. It's the eye contact. <laughs> you like Black Hawk? You mean like one bulge <laughs> on the other cocked and squinting? Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait a minute. What about like the the bisexual or the uh, old young? Oh, I could. I mean, I just the bisexual is more of a theoretical. It's like you could just lie to me and tell me he's bisexual, and it would be just as good. If the man's crying, then you know he's not a real bisexual and just needs rent money. <laughs> if Come he's on, crying, if he's cr- covered in a rash. There's like three of them that are truly bisexual. Uh huh. True. Th- in the world, I love you even more. I love you than more. Ever. You're, yeah. you're fucking. We have amazing. to have you back. <laughs> you, we you, do. you, you, you. I'd play with you anytime. I love you guys. <laughs> Will you come back on another cheat day? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Will you come on Jessica's and back? It, it's I don't want that. Why? Why not? I, Why I, not? I love you. I don't want your come on me. See, when I love someone, know, I want their come on me. A and woman. It's good, it's you good. want a woman to shoot come all over you? I don't see gender. I um, want girl come. <laughs> Girl, come! See, you're, making, you're, making it, you're making it sound. Ex, you're making it sound exciting, like it's like nice red would sweet Kool Aid. Yeah, would this come. turn you on? Oh my god, I'm totally gonna come. Can I come say, on your back? Say I'm gonna squirt. I'm gonna squirt. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my vagina squirting. <laughs> Bye, I have everybody. a black power fist in the I, air. I need a. <laughs> I need he a does. Wash- He's holding his fist in the air. <laughs> I need a washcloth. Thank you for listening to Fat Pig. Share, subscribe, and uh, masturbate. Love you. Bye. Bye. Happy Gay Pride. Work. <laughs>